today I'll show you how to do a triptych in monochrome and I'm using Photoshop Elements 12 as shown here with nothing on it at the moment and um, the principle of doing this is to paste into use the paste into command which is found under edit here it is in grey at the moment um, and uh, we can use that on a, near a place that's black. So if we have a white screen with black patches we can paste into the, ba the, the patches and nowhere else as you will see. So what we do is produce a template first uh, and by using Faster Viewer as my preferred choice if I go down to my onto my favorites which are all these selected things I can go to templates here and in the templates there are as you see a selection of possible templates I could use. Um, I quite like this one with a sort of panoramic sort of view and this one are quite narrow strips but I quite prefer this one I think for the wider strips for the purposes I'm doing here. Now if I right click on that <coughs> you can see edit with external program and Photoshop Elements is the top one and should open here. There we are. So if I now slide that up it should go into there and hang on there. Right now we need pictures to paste into these and we get those again from Photoshop um, Fastone Viewer and in my favourites I've got a selection from Heaver Castle which we went to last July and out of these I've selected, I've tagged three for with this red square thing so if I click on that you'll see the three I've tagged so if I do control A and then right click I can again open with an external or edit with an external program called Photoshop Elements so they should open here now if I go down to when it's opened oh they've opened now, if I go down to layout to default they're all hanging on the top here so Heaver Castle here is this that one there so if I put that to the right and then I've got the the three black rectangles, the castle itself, Anne Boleyn and some of the uh, Italian architecture. So we've got these three pictures, they're the wrong size, they're the wrong shape and all sorts. This one has got some gross distortion you must admit. So first thing I'll do is uh, straighten them up a bit. So what I can do is control A to select and then control T and then right click and select perspective. Now if I put the grid on with control plus ast uh, uh, control plus comma and then move the bottom one into the right here I thought I'd control perspective, make sure it's right that's better and then I can see here and here but it's more or less parallel. S similarly here to here looks pretty parallel so we'll call that a day. What it means is we're going to lose areas on that are white so I can remove the grid. Now I get the crop tool and I've made this crop tool 1200 by 1600 1600 high and 1200 wide. So if I click down here somewhere and then oops. You'll see I'm constrained to those proportions. Can't do any more. So there we are. Click on that and it should be the right size. If I double click the hand, it'll fill the screen. Then if I go to the right hand side to the layers over here, click on the adjustment layer icon and then from that select levels and then from the levels I can click auto to make it easy. And there we are. Look at that gorgeous. So now I fl uh, flatten that, I think. Could flatten it later. And I can also go to the, to the adjustment layer icon and select gradient map. And I get a monochrome picture immediately. I should flatten it again. So I go to the next image of Anne. Uh, that doesn't need much attention apart from cropping it. So here we are, I've got the crop tool. Select, make sure it's centralized using the 
don't want to go that you can't go above it well you can but don't do it so that just fits in nicely click OK click OK to this on the gradient map again that's very good I think we'll keep that as it is flatten final and final part of the puzzle again we don't need to do much using the crop tool again select the bit we want is that all the bit we want do we want less than a foreground perhaps so we have too much it then doesn't fall oh, that's not too bad that will come down into too much ceiling yeah that's it that's right that'll do double click the hand to enlarge it to the full size and then go to the uh, uh, adjustment layer gradient map and then there it is a monochrome picture now we might want to go to levels just to tweak it a bit and as you see there's a gap down the back here so we move that in a bit to darken the black bits I thought there's, a, there's a whole patch of white here showing this black area here but if we ignore that because it's burnt out we can drag that across and get a, a rather better looking image so now let's flatten those two layers together all those layers together now we've got our three images one two and three so what we do near now is to select each of these using this quick selector tool here uh, click on it and then drag across we selected that go to our first image control a control c to copy it back to the triptych image then edit paste into and there it is now it doesn't fit in correctly so we need to do uh, some adjustments so we do control T to do this uh, transform tool and then we can drag oh must, for must forget to press the scale button um, drag that up and drag this one down and that'll do it fits in beautifully right control D to deselect back to this selection tool and select this area it's done there go to our middle image of Anne Berlin control A to select all control C to copy back to the triptych back to edit paste into and then control T to, to transform just uh, pressing the scale again so drag it up and drag it down and there she is beautifully encompassed control D to remove the uh, adjustment layer now back to a quick connect button uh, quick select selected that back to the last image control A control C back to the triptych and then paste into and then control D and then click uh, click the scale again um, and then drag up and drag down now we can move it across a little bit and even it up up a bit perhaps yes perfect right so there we are control D and there we have a triptych now we can go further than this we can uh, put borders around each of these blocks and the way that I've found that the easiest way to do that is to make a copy of the layer like so with control plus J so we've got a second copy here then if we put on a levels on that and do it ludicrously so that it's so dark like so even then the windows are showing up it's going to be rather difficult to make it even darker no it doesn't work that's as dark as it will go <laughs> okay what it means is we can try and select white um, and um, let's see if I just no, that'll do right we'll then use a quick selector brush to select the white but of course what it's going to do when we get to the windows oh it's managed not to do that excellent now we go down the side let's 
So there we've already selected the round. The only problem is this little bit here by the looks of it, I think. If I just zoom into that. Oh no, I think it's perfect. So what we've done is managed to select the whole thing. Um, so we go back to the full scale by double clicking the hand. Now we can remove that and remove that. Oh, we can leave that there. Throw that one away. And now we've selected them round, so we're selecting the white area. So what we want to do is invert that, I think. So to do that, select inverse. And now we've selected the pictures themselves. Now if we now go to edit and stroke, it says f it's I've selected five pixels here, color black inside. So the black edge will come in within there. If you look now, you'll see, he said, um, with a with a zoom tool, you can see what I've added in. Right. So deselect with a control D, and you should be able to see a, a, a subtle black border around each of those. Now I'll undo the deselect because there's other things you can do. On the last video, I failed to do the layer styles, and I've now realized why. In order to be able to see the drop shadows, the drop shadows must go over onto a white background. So, although I've got two layers, it didn't work properly. But if I now have got them, all of these three selected, if I just make a new layer from those by doing, well, layer, new, uh, I think that'll do it, Bar copy, you see it's uh, control plus J, I get an, a, layer, a copy up there of all of the pictures, but on a, on a transparent background. Now the layer styles will work. Layer, layer style, style settings, drop shadow, and now we can change the shape, you see, like that, distance, opacity, that looks much nicer change the angle of it. So there we have that. But we've got other possibilities. We've got stroke and bevel and glow. Well, I don't think a, a bevel would really be of any use, <laughs> as you can see. And not nor a glow nor a stroke, because we've already done a stroke. So going to that, but what we can do is we can go to the bottom layer, say, or well, say that layer, and go to fill and if we go to edit fill layer and we can fill it with a pattern of some sort that's uh, I think nature's patterns we want a monochrome pattern and artist surfaces are all like that that might be possible one of those let's try this coarse one here um, and then using that at well we've got 33 percent here we could use a higher percentage just to see what it's like 41 percent preserve transfer leave that as it is a blank click on ok and there you are you see you've got a, an extra dimension of a patterned background you don't have to be happy with that background but there you are then you merely flatten your image and then save it 